contrast with the traditional ID code, can't or are limited. So then you're kind of fighting different adjustments against each other, and what would you do is a great example of that. Uh, but with the luminosity only, we've got this great way of adjusting contrast without affecting the color. So just to make that clear, luma, luminosity only, if your color is locked in, then you can make those contrast changes without affecting exactly what you see there. That is a great point, because right now you see here that in the luma curve itself, you saw that the changes to contrast have been applied, except the saturation hasn't shifted. And that is a huge benefit to me. Um, for obvious reasons, as you can see from the <coughs> changes we've done for standard curve. And, you know, this, this um, algorithm engine or power they did their magic on the back end, it, it's, it's very spectacular. Um, and we can use these as, as we build our layers in Capture Room as well, and that we're going to get into. So it's a great point. Um, the next part that I think which is really exceptional is using layers in the local adjustment brush section. Because here you have the standard tools, except now you can build them, you can mask certain elements, and I want to show you practical examples of that. Aside from that, you do have your standard white balance tools over here. You can see you can adjust your Kelvin and your tint. You also have a black and white conversion option in case you'd like to do that, and so forth. You also have a basic tab under your color editor. But that's if you want to do quick changes that isolate colors quite easily. The other advantage of this color editor tab is in the advanced section, as well as the skin tone tab, you have what is known as the ability to modify the selection. So as we did before, we've selected a particular area of the skin. If we go ahead and say view selected color range, what it does is desaturates everything that we don't want selected. So as you see here, we've selected a beige and any moon green color. If I go ahead and pull that out of here, just like a typical palette, and expand it over. I'm going to show you gently how to see what we've selected here. So this point in the middle here illustrates the point we selected with our color picker, but then also shows us the surrounding colors that uh, get, get highlighted. For instance, this edge here, which is soft because of the smooth and slider, shows you that we've also selected some lipstick here. We can start by bringing in the smoothness so that the transition is a lot sharper. And you can see what happens here is when we do that, it ends up cutting into it because there's no smoothness in, in bringing it. So if we bring that up, we can also adjust these parameters here to select simply just the skin. And just like that, we've selected most of the skin tone without affecting the lipstick. Now, in case that doesn't uh, always work, we have layers that we're going to incorporate, but that's something to keep in mind. Now, before I get into really complex examples using the color editor, I'm going to go ahead and reset this. And we're going to jump into some prime examples. So I'm going to go up to my uh, library tab and click on all images. And first and foremost, again, I want to thank everybody who actually submitted some of their images because we got uh, uh, quite a few of them. <laughs> Very many. <laughs> yeah, uh, rightfully so because they're quite, they're quite beautiful uh, from all over the world. So I want to thank everyone specifically for those who submitted from beauty shops to fashion images um, that span a wide range uh, of color, whether it be neutral. Shots. We have you know, ones of beautiful penguins from Antarctica, from George, Elmo Lee, we have Duncan Chang, um, Bryce Chapman, and so forth. So thanks everyone again, and let's get into this. Now over here, I already went ahead and started some of the images that we are going to be covering today um, that I think are, are beneficial to some examples I want to drive through, especially for working photographers that have common issues. The first thing that I want to show here is the color editor. Now with the color editor itself, let me go ahead and reset this really quickly. The color editor itself, if you are a landscape photographer or if you are a photographer that works um, in fantasy like one of those, the color editor is really amazing because it allows you to actually select 
um, colors in the background. For instance, in this example, let's say that we are going to be selecting some of the leaves. We want to change specifically the leaves color. If you didn't have um, the color picker here and you had to manually mask out everything, it would take quite a while in Photoshop to do. Or if you want to fine tune them, it's harder to do that um, without having this in the raw processor. So for instance, in our advanced section in our color editor, we have used a color picker to basically pick the color we want to modify. And you can see every time I use a color picker, it adds another quote unquote layer to the selection. So I can go in and pick anyone I want.